can, we can see you uh, watching and are joining with us together. So you're welcome to do that. If you have your Bibles with you, let's turn to 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 8 to 6. 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 8 to 6. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath. This is God speaking to Elijah. Which belongs to Zidon, and dwell there. And behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and he went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the, wo the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. You see, there was such a, a harsh famine in the land. There had been no rain, no water, that uh, people were starving literally to death. And so she was going to eat this last handful of meal and that she was going to eat it and then eventually her and her son would die. In verse 13, Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first. And bring it unto me, and after make for you and your son. For thus saith the Lord, God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. What a promise. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and her, and her house did eat many days. Our final verse, verse 16, And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. I want to talk to you today on this thought. When trusting God is a handful. When trusting God is a handful. Would you pray with me together? Let's ask the Lord to bless us, to speak to us once again. Father, you are a faithful God. You are as near to us as the very air we breathe. Lord, you are within us. God, as your Holy Spirit, as a river of living water flows from our innermost being. And so once again today, we pray that we would remove all distractions from our hearts and minds and help us to tune in to the voice of the Spirit of God that is speaking to us. Anoint your servant. Anoint the people of God all throughout, wherever we are in our homes watching and connecting together with this service. Lord, let the Spirit of God have its way and work in our lives. Bless, heal, strengthen, encourage. Help us, Lord God, to remove all frustrations and, and all kinds of angst and fear and anger. And Lord God, help us to have patience and trust in your word. So bless us now, we pray. Bless all those that would give. Use it for the furtherance of the gospel. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. Also want to, to let you know that uh, the funeral for Sister Arietta Narawa will be this Wednesday. Uh, of course, we are not uh, allowed. Ma majority of the people are, are only about 10 are allowed to attend the funeral, but we will be live streaming it. So the link, again, will be on our POS family page for those that want to join. It's, uh, I think, about 1130 on, on Wednesday. Amen. This was a time when in the text that we read, and, and the more I read uh, situations in the Old Testament of, of famines, of, of great restrictions, the more I realize uh, that the situation we find ourselves in in the world with this pandemic, with lockdowns, uh, it, it's really not too dissimilar what, to what the people of God had experienced. Only that what they experienced was much, much worse. Uh, they didn't have internet to uh, keep them occupied. They did not have uh, the situations like we do where we can stay home and enjoy the luxuries and the comforts of home. In this story, we read of, of Elijah, there was a great famine in the land, 
because of the idolatry of Ahab the king. There was no rain and no food. And in the preceding verses that we read, we, we read of, of how God commanded the prophet Elijah to go to the brook Cherith or Cherith, and, and he commands him to stay there. It's, it's, he gives him a restriction. It's like a lockdown. He stays there uh, in, by the brook where he, he has sustained the, 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 the river, the brook, the water in the brook would be to his sustenance. And, and then God sends a raven, an unclean animal, by which to bring Elijah food, his breakfast and dinner every single day. You, you talk about an Uber Eats. You talk about a menu log that it's, you know, this dirty bird that comes and brings. I don't know if he had it like a plastic bag in its mouth and it had it all wrapped up like, you know, like a, 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 an Asian takeaway or something like that. But he was sustained by a dirty bird delivering food at his doorstep every day. <laughs> a, bit like, a bit like Uber Eats. Um, and his thirst was quenched by the brook. And then it's, we get to the, the portion of 1 Kings chapter 17 where God tells him, uh, he tells him to leave. And, and it tells us that the, the brook would dry, was dried out. And so he's got to go. He can't stay there. And I want to simply say today that there are times in our lives that God will give us just enough of what we need to survive. And that there are times even in our walk with God that we are not always in abundance, but there are times where we would go through lean seasons. And this is a season that we're finding ourselves in, living in a period of history. This is a history-making event that has shaken the whole world. Amen. And, but it's not even that bad. <laughs> it, it, as much as it has been an irritation and an annoyance to me personally that we can't gather in the church and we don't have the freedom and the mobility that we normally enjoy, yet if you look at, at some of the things that have happened in our history, this is really quite mild. Even in comparison to the, the other flu 100 years ago, the Spanish flu, where uh, over 50 million were killed. And there was uh, not as much information that was possible. And this flu uh, was, was taking the lives of everybody, young and old. And, of course, uh, even within the last hundred years of our history, there's been two massive world wars that, that had decimated the population of the world. And so what we are experiencing, as much as it is irritating, yet it is nonetheless, uh, it, it is mild in comparison to what what is going on and, and what we've seen in the world and including what's happening in the Bible. But I want you to know the times that there will be lean seasons. There will be times where, where God has you in a place where it's, he doesn't always want you to stay there. But sometimes the water will run out. Sometimes the brook will dry up, and, and it's only because God has another station for us to go. He's got another level for us to go to. Amen. And so wherever you find yourself in whatever circumstance in life, when things are not turning out and, and things begin to get uncomfortable, it could be that God is calling us to the next level of our walk with God. He's calling us to elevate our faith. He's calling us, like our theme for this year of I faith, he wants us to go to that next phase of our walk with God. Amen. And so he tells him, okay, that's, uh, yeah, you've, you've been fed enough there. It's time for you to go to elsewhere. And so he he heads to uh, the place of, of a widow woman. When the, after the brook had, had all but dried up, he goes to a place called Zarephath, and, and it's a, a place in Zidon, in an area called Zidon, called Zarephath. And the word Zarephath means refinement. The word Kerith or Cherith means to cut. Amen. And so he went from a place of cutting, a place where he was being fed by a bird, to now he was going to a place of refinement. And sometimes in the, our walk with God, he takes us sometimes from a hard place to a harder place. Amen. Uh, we sometimes we think it couldn't get any worse. I thought it couldn't get any worse than last year. And then here we go in 2021, it's even worse. We go from a place of cutting to refinement. Amen. He goes from a place of, of difficulty where at least he has his own space to now he's got to go to a woman 
a widow woman who is about to die because there's no food. And so uh, he calls to her and he tells her to go out and, and to, to give, her some, give him some drink. And, and she will, she's about to go. He stops her. Hold on. Uh, don't just get me a drink. I need something to eat. He's gotten used to being fed and, and having drink. And then it, all she had was this handful of meal. That's all she had. And she tells him, listen, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't have a cake. I've just got a handful of meal in verse number 12 in a barrel and just a tiny little bit of oil. I'm going to make this as our last and final meal for my son and I, and we are going to die. And then he says this remarkable thing. He says, okay, well, uh, go ahead, make what you're doing, but make me something first. She's like, uh, you know, I guess we're kind of reading between the lines here, but, but she would have just, I would have thought, well, I just told you this is my last meal. This is all I have left, and you want me to, to make a little cake for you? She was in the midst of one of the most severe famines that they had ever experienced in that land. And now she was getting ready to die, and Elijah wanted her to make him a little cake. Elijah was asking from her to take from her, from her hands, her final meal. This was, uh, would have been such a difficult thing. If you, if you try to imagine, if you try to put yourself in the, in the shoes of this widow woman and how how you would have reacted, like, uh, you know, this is, this is it. We're going to die. Can I even die in peace? Can, can I just even have some dignity and enjoy our last and final meal? But now here comes the prophet, the man of God, the representative of God asking me to give to him. The handful that she had left represented all that she had. And, and let me just say here today that, that sometimes we have a tendency to trust God when, when, uh, when we've got an abundance. There's a tendency to, that we don't mind helping and giving out of the abundance that we have. That it's okay to give to a need because we've got so much left over because we are just overflowing with aff affluence and, and with so much of the material blessings that we're enjoying but the question is, uh, are we willing to trust and are we willing to give when we don't even have enough for ourselves? When it seems like all we have, the little bit that we have that God is asking for, are we willing to trust God to give him what little that we have, what we have left, and put it into the hands of God uh, for, for, to give to his cause and to his purpose? I want you to know today that God knows whatever needs we have. He understands the situation and the circumstances that we have, and it seems almost fruitless. It seems almost unreasonable that, that we should be giving the, the last bit that we have, that we should be putting it into the hands of God. But can I tell you here, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, that whatever it is that you have, if you continue to put God first, if you continue to prioritize the Lord and say he is at number one, that even in the midst of our lockdown, even in the midst of our restrictions, yet it seems fruitless, it seems unreasonable that we ought to continue to worship, we ought to continue to praise, we ought to continue to wake up in the morning like we always do and pray because we are stuck where we are. No, can I tell you that's exactly what we need to do in the circumstances that we are in. When you don't know what to do, you do what you know to do. When you don't know what else to do in your life, you do what you know to do, and that is to continue to seek the Lord. That is continue to put him first and prioritize because the words of Jesus Christ continues to ring true, that if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all of these things will be added unto you. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Praise God if we continue to prioritize even if it seems like it's futile, even if it seems like, what's the point? We can't even go to church at the moment. We can't even see each other. You know, we're, we're stuck at home. But rem let me remind you uh, that while we are resting, yes, we're making the most of our time, our downtime, our lockdown. We are going to make the most of our time at home and finding some rest and finding some recovery. You, we ought to do what we can, but don't forget to put God first always. 
Don't forget to prioritize the Lord. Like you, you got to continue to maintain your devotions. You've got to continue to maintain your prayer life. You, you got to get the family together, get the children together uh, once, uh, once a day, even just for half an hour once a day, and say, we're going to read the Bible together. We're going to pray together. We're going to invite the presence of the Lord. We can utilize this time. So what, what else do we have but to put it in the hands of God? Praise the Lord. And so sometimes trusting God means giving to him what you have left. Oh, I've only got $50 left, and God, I've got got to keep that to myself. Listen to me. If you put God to the test, trust in him. I've heard so many times people telling me, well, I... I can't give him my tithes because, you know, it's, it's the last money that I have, and God understands he owes it all. And I can understand that logic. I can understand that, 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 that kind of thinking, absolutely. But what I'm saying to you today is that if you trust in God, if you have the faith to believe in God, that whatever it is that you think you might be lacking, if you continue to follow his word, if you continue to obey the man of God, obey the word of God, and say, well, God, I'm going to keep trusting in you. I'm going to put my, my final money, whatever it is. It is uh, You ought to put give your first to God anyway. But if you continue to bring your tithes, uh, I promise you, God said, put me to the test. He said, try me now and see if... If I will not open to you the windows of heaven and pour out blessings you can't even contain. Let me remind you that God will be no man's debtor. He will not see his children begging bread. That if you are willing, and it doesn't make any sense, but say, God, I'm giving to you my whatever I have left. It's only just a handful, but I'm giving it to you. I'm telling you, you will see the promise and the power and the blessings of God being poured out in your life. Put him to the test, he said. Put him on the line. Come on, put him. They say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust your word and see what you will do. And I'm telling you, in the almost 30 years I've been walking with God, he's never forsaken the righteous. He's always met every need, not just for me, but for all my brothers and sisters that are part of this assembly. That's why I'm not discouraged. I'm not disheartened with what's going on in our world because God knows what he's doing. He's got it all in his plan and his time clock and so we can learn to rejoice in whatever we have left oh you can put it in his hands you see this all throughout scripture you see this remember the story of of the when when God when Jesus was feeding the 5000 and and they called for they found a boy that had uh, two loaves and a few fish and five loaves and two fishes and that's all that they had yet because uh, Jesus always asked for what they had even no matter how little it was wanted to see their attitude and their spirit whether they were willing to give and distribute the little that they have whatever it is that you have no matter how little it is maybe it's just a test Maybe all you have is a is an online a Facebook ministry that you can share this live stream or you can share scriptures, but put it out there and see what God will do. Praise God. And God can multiply and do something with it. Amen. When you don't know what to do, do what you know to do. What is it that we have? We have the ability to pray. And could it be that in the midst of this lockdown, that more than any other time, God is calling this church to pray? I'm putting the challenge out there to you, brothers and sisters, that while we are, we are stuck at home, that this is a time that we can get on our knees and begin to knock on heaven's door. While we are there, we can, we can call upon heaven. We can ask the Lord to bring a revival such as never seen before. We can, let's build up our prayers as it were. I wonder what would happen if we began to pray earnestly and fast and lifted up our voices unto heaven and, and bring an accumulation. You know, I believe it's like a, like a dam, that, a dam that holds water, that the more water builds up, the more pressure it builds up until when there's so much water, it either overflows or it breaks the dam. I want to challenge you that are listening today, the church of the living God. Let's bring our 
prayers before God. Let's ask for a revival. Let's ask for God to do a work right now in the hearts of people that in a few weeks' time when we come together, there's going to be a mighty revival that Sydney has never seen. The people are going to message you. They're going to call you and say, well, can you share to me about what it is that you believe? That they're going to be asking you for a Bible study. They're going to be asking you the directions to the church. I'm telling you, we can pray and ask God. We can build such a pressure in heaven as it were for God to pour out a revival such as we have never seen before. Come on, folks. There's got to be something to be redeemed from what we're experiencing in the world. This is not happening for no reason at all, but there is purpose behind every circumstance. There's a reason. There's something to be redeemed with what we are going through. And by, for, with all that's happening, I believe God can use it for his glory to reach this lost world. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. I have reserved making comments about anything that's going on politically with our situation because even in this church alone, there, there are various views and, uh, about this the, the vaccine and so on. But, but I want to tell you that, that God, God knows what he's doing. I, I believe God's going to use this to remind us. I believe it, there, there is, it is a, a, a foreshadowing of things to come in the future where he talks about it in, in the end times and prophecy of, of what will happen in the world. I believe the world's going to be more chaotic. But as the world gets more chaotic, as the world gets more confused, there will be a voice. There will be a light shining in the darkness and the chaos of this world. And that is none other than the church of the living God. Out of everyone in this this world. We stand on solid ground. The Bible says we are in a kingdom that cannot be shaken. We are standing on a firm foundation that with what's happening in the world right now, there's a shaking going on. There's a sifting. There's a whole lot of shaking going on. There's a sifting going on. And when all the sifting is done, the church will be standing victorious. The church will be standing with truth and light. And I'm telling you, it's going to be our hour. It's going to be our moment when we come out of the shadows and people will see that the truth of God's word, it will stand forever. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. And if you're listening to this and, and you are not born again, you're, you are not sure about your eternity. Let me tell you, you can be born again. It doesn't matter who you are. If you are willing to come and repent and turn your, from your sins and believe in God, and be baptized in Jesus' name and be filled with his Holy Spirit, being born again of water and the Spirit, telling you you can be saved and be a part of this kingdom that cannot be shaken. Praise God. And so this, this widow woman preparing to make her final meal because this famine that was so severe, that was so harsh, there was no food, there was nothing to eat, that they were uh, uh, getting ready to die. But she obeyed. Even with what she, little she had, she took Elijah at his word. He promised that if you, if you do this, the barrel will not, will, will not fail. Uh, the, the cruise of oil will not, will not be emptied. But you're going to continue to experience God's provision. Amen. Let me remind you today that sometimes trusting God is a handful. That means it's going to require for you and I to work to trust God. Not only was she willing to give what she had, but she had to work it. She had to make the cake that Elijah was, was asking for. Sometimes trusting God requires work. It requires us to do something. It require us, requires us to give the very best that we have, to expend energy, to pray. It's not just going to happen. Revival is not just going to happen. People are not just going to come always. Sometimes we've got to go out to them. Sometimes we've got to reach out to folks. Sometimes we've got to work whatever God has called us to do. Remember a story when the children of Israel and their armies, the three armies, along with, with the uh, other armies that were fighting against the, the Moab, and, and they were walking for three days around the wilderness. 
They didn't have anything to drink. They run out of, uh, of water. The, the whole three, three massive armies were going to be reduced to corpses in the wilderness simply because they did not have this one simple element called water. They were about to die. And so they called upon the man of God. The prophet told them to dig ditches, dig the valley where they were full of ditches. Now remember that by this time, the soldiers would have been tired. After three days of marching in the desert, in the desert sun, dehydrated, such, such, dry, such dry conditions. And the third day, they, were, they had to dig this should have been the last thing that they were doing because digging ditches, they were already tired. They were already worn out. But, but they, they obeyed. And the next day, the Bible tells us every, every ditch that was dug was filled with water. God provided for his children. He provided for them. And they, they were stuck. They could have just easily had given up. They were tired, but they just did the work. They did the work that was required. And as a result of what they could do, God provided for them. Can I tell you, if you do what you can do, do it. Maybe all you can do is pray, but get on your knees and get a hold of God. Maybe all you can do is, is, is contact somebody, call somebody, encourage them. Maybe all that you could do is, is, is work as best you can, do whatever you can, even from your home. But listen to me, when you do what you can do, God will do the rest. He will provide for our every need. He will make sure that we are, we are covered, that we have every, we are sustained. We have every need that we have. Such is the goodness of God. But he does it in partnership with us. He won't do it just by himself. He says, no, you got to do it. You notice how he does that in the Bible? He always asks what they have in their hands. He always asks, what do you have? How many loaves do you have? What do you got in your hand, Moses? It's just a stick. And, and the rod of Moses probably, it represented his, his identity. It represented his, his occupation. That was all that he had. And God said, lay it down on the ground. And when he was willing to lay down what, what, what was most prized to him, God did something supernatural with that thing. He always looks for what we have. And sometimes trusting in God means giving what we have. It means working what we ha- with what we have, doing all we can to work. I am convinced that God can prosper us in the time of famine. In the time of this lockdown, I believe with all of my heart that God can use it to bless us, to use it for his glory, to use it for his purpose. He can prosper us. Remember the story of, of uh, Isaac when the Bible says there was a famine in the land, a similar circumstance. Well, instead of uh, having nothing and doing nothing because there was a famine, you know what Isaac did? He continued to sow in the land. And God gave him a hundredfold, a hundred times in the same year, the Bible says, yes, the same year of famine. When, when everybody else was hungry, when everybody else was, was starving and they were, had nothing, yet he, because he sowed, he didn't, wait, he, he didn't quit, he didn't complain because there was a famine in the land. He says, oh, there's a famine, I'm going to sow. That's what I know to do. I don't know how to change a famine. That's beyond my control. That's not for me to deal with. That's, that's God's problem. What I know to do is to sow in the land. And when he sowed, he had a hundredfold more. He got more than what he had. He had more sheep, more cattle. God gave to him. I promise you, this is maybe a time where we want to maybe drift off from church. And I understand the temptation. You know, I understand we're not seeing each other and we're not, we're not compelled to wake up in the morning and put our Sunday best on and, and somehow we, you know, we just got, got into a bad routine. But let me tell you, if you keep doing what you know to do, keep praying, keep putting God as priority in your life. I'm telling you, we, 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 when we are, every time the people of God are locked down, they prayed. Daniel, let him see, when he was, for three weeks, he just prayed and fasted. Before the answer came, Paul and Silas locked up in the dungeon. What did they do? They began to pray and sing praises unto God until God did something. Maybe God is using this time for us to make our homes a sanctuary, an altar 
where the prayers can, can go up before God. If we started to seek God together with such fervency and desire, I'm telling you, God can do something powerful. Oh, I look forward to the day when we're together again. And uh, we are trying to make the most of this time to rest, to eat. <laughs> Don't do that too much. Make sure you incorporate some fasting in there. But also a time where we can seek the Lord together. That's all, I, all she had. But because she gave it to the man of God, she gave him what was hers, what her final thing. Yet that barrel of flour never, never failed. That cruise would never run empty. She just kept making every day more food and more food and more food. If you put God to the test, he'll never run out. He is the source. He'll never run out of, of giving you joy. He'll never run out of things to, to bless you with. But you got to continue to give. you got to continue to pour out. As I come to a close, the Bible tells us, as that story goes on, uh, that the woman's son died. Uh, he had a, a problem in his situation. And yet the man of God was there to bring this boy back to life. Whatever, whatever it is, that has died, whatever circumstance you find yourself in, if you trust in God, which sometimes is hard, sometimes it means giving what you have, sometimes it means working through the situation that you're in, working hard, sweating it out, doing what you need to do. When the time comes, whatever has died, God can bring it back to life. He can breathe new, new joy. He can breathe fresh passion. Maybe, maybe you've kind of just drifted away in these last few weeks from God. Maybe you've kind of become a little dry, cold. I want to encourage you, if there's, if there's just a little bit of desire left, if there's just a little inkling of, of a desire for God, bring that before the Lord. And see that God will continue to give and pour out. Continue to worship God. Continue to make your, your devotion, your commitment to connect with God every day. Continue to give. Give for the work of God. Give for a cause of God. Give to those who need. Reach out to somebody. Do what you can. And become a person. Become, become a man and a woman of prayer. That we will trust God for whatever circumstance and whatever we have left. Trusting God, yes, it's a handful. Yes, it's going to make you inconvenient, uncomfortable, make you sweat. Oh, but it'll be worth it all. You'll find that the joy will never cease. So why don't we pray right now, wherever you are, lift up your voice in the name of Jesus. I pray if you are with your family, why don't you link hands together or pray for one another. But I want to let, ask you for these next few minutes to make this as a time of, of your prayer, of your altar before God. And say, God, here I am. Here's my meal. I've only got a little bit left. Maybe there's only a little bit of desire left. Oh, but I'm going to give it to you as you have commanded, as you've spoken to us through this message. Father, in the name of Jesus, let God, sometimes we are discouraged with what little we have when we look. Well, Lord God, I pray that what, what, what little that's left, that we continue to put it in your hands. Use it to your glory. Use it to lay upon the altar of sacrifice and say, God, we're trusting you with the, what we have left. We're trusting you with what, what is left of us, and we're going to give it to you. Lord, we're going to do what, whatever you called us to do. We're going to obey you. We're going to meet your needs first. We're going to do what you've called. We're going to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. And, Lord, we're going to trust you that all, as you have promised, all of these things will be added unto us. We're going to trust your promises. Your word will never fail. Your word has never faltered. Heaven and earth will pass away, but your word shall abide forever. And we're going to build our lives upon your promises that it will come to pass. 
Oh, precious Lord. Father, restore our joy. Restore our desire for you. Let us become women and men of prayer. Let us seek after you. Let us, let us enter into the realm of prayer, of supplication, of intercession. Lord God, getting deeper in our walk with you. Let us set time aside of fasting. Let us meditate upon your word. Let us do whatever we can to reach out to our brothers and sisters with a word of encouragement to share your truth. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, as the musicians and singers lead us, I wonder if you could just pray, worship the Lord together with us and continue to give God your heart, your spirit, and lift up your voice. This is our time of giving our heart to the Lord, of giving ourselves to Jesus. Amen. Thank you.